this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create this wedding invitation. If you get stuck, make sure to go back and take a look at sections one to three of our Basics of Photoshop course and refer to the course material. We will also be using artwork from the free design kit that goes along with this course. So make sure to check all that out before you get started. So this is a finished wedding invite. However, you could use the principles to create your own social media post, a blog image or something for your website. Hopefully by the end of it, you will feel more confident to come up with your own designs. So I'm going to show you how I created this right from the very start. First of all, go up to File and then New. And we're going to create a new document that's going to be custom. So I want to work in inches and I want to choose five inches wide and seven inches high. And this is quite a standard wedding invite design size. You can go ahead and type in your own custom sizes, but I'm going to stick with this for just now. I'm going to have portrait orientation, 300 pixels per inch. And at the moment, I'm going to stick with RGB color. Then hit create. The first thing I want to do is add a pattern background to my canvas. To do that, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. So at the bottom of your layers panel, select the adjustment layers and go down to pattern. Now, if you don't see this pattern, make sure to go back and check out section three, backgrounds and patterns, where we walked through how to install this particular pattern. Make sure also link with layer is selected so you can see it. I'm going to scale this down to 60%. Now I'm going to move my pattern along and I want to have a bit of floral or leaves right on the edges of each corner. So, roughly about there. Okay, hit OK when you're done. Next, what I'm going to do is create some guidelines. These guidelines are really going to help find the center point of my design. So to do this, go up to view, new guide, and with horizontal type 50%, then hit OK. And we're going to do the same again. View, new guide, this time vertical, 50%. Then hit OK. So these guidelines will not be shown in your finished design and I will also show you how to remove them at the end. OK, next I really want to have a background for my text to appear on. So I'm going to create a rectangle for that. Go over to your toolbar and select the rectangle tool. If you don't see this, right click it and it's the top one here. Click on that. And I don't want too much of a floral border on this one, so I'm going to start my rectangle about here and drag and drop it until you feel got something quite nice. Okay, and now I'm going to use my move tool and with my guidelines on, as you can see, it turns pink. So when you see this, you know that your design is going to be centered. So you can let go. Next, this color is horrible, so I'm going to change that. Go to your shape tool again and up to fill. And in your swatches, right next to white, you should have one that's 10% gray. Click on that. And then also next to it, make sure that your stroke has no fill to it. I'm going to click on my move tool. And here we have the background for our text. So let's write some text on this now. Go over to your text tool in the toolbar. Hit T on your keyboard for short and move your cursor to the center of the vertical guideline. Just click on that and now I'm going to start typing. Now I've just drawn one line and for the next part I want it to be on a separate line. So I'm just going to hit my return key on my keyboard and I'm going to do it again. Okay, so that's me done my text. Notice that every time I wanted a new line, I hit enter on my keyboard. So when you're happy with the composition, make sure to hit this tick at the top here. And don't worry, we can go back in and change this. I'm going to use my move tool now to move the text down. And again, my guidelines are going to help as they snap it into the center. So 
roughly about here. Okay, next I'm going to add some artwork and I'm going to be using artwork that we created in our project one and that is our floral arrangement. So go up to file and place embedded and choose your floral arrangement. Make sure to choose the PNG and then hit place. So your floral arrangement will be now in the center of your canvas. However, it's far too big. So hold down the shift key and using your directional arrows, pull the design in. So I'm going to place it at the top here. So I'm just going to keep it here whilst I draw it in. And when you're happy with the size, you can then rotate. I'm going to take mine a bit and a, a little bit smaller, I think. Okay, when you're happy with that, hit this tick at the top. Now I'm going to edit my text a little bit more. So I'm going to actually pull my text down. So to do that, go into your text layer with your move tool still selected, then you can drag down your text. Okay, next I would like to highlight where the names are. I'd like them to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my text tool and the font that I've chosen for this is Times New Roman and everything is regular at 10 points and the color that I want to use is in my swatches panel. So right down at the bottom, this very dark green here and then hit OK. For the names, I'd like these to be a little bit Bigger. So I'm going to go and make these 16 points and I'd like these to be bold. Notice it will only change the part that you've highlighted. So I'm also going to go in and adjust this time and like this to be bold as well. Also make sure to have your text in the center so that everything is aligned beautifully down the middle. Hit tick when you're done. I'm going to use my move tool and that will get rid of this box around the edge here. Okay, I think one last thing will just finish off this design and I'm going to use a brush just to add a little detail here. So go into your tools panel and find your brush, minus here. If you do not see these brushes, make sure to go back to section three and you can install these brushes. I'm going to choose the gray leaves and if you just hover over your canvas, you can see that you cannot preview this design. So make sure to go onto your layers panel first and then create new layer. And now you will be able to see your preview of your brush. Okay, I'm going back up to my brushes. I want this to be maneuvered around a little bit. So yeah, like so. Now I also want them to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to use my shortcut method. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard and use my left bracket on my keyboard to make this design smaller. This is really good. It's an easy way to preview if you'd like it smaller or larger. You can just use the right or left bracket to toggle between the two. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I want to make sure I've got the right color selected. Go into your color picker and make sure to go down to your swatches and I'm going to choose the stone color and hit OK. And now I'm ready to stamp my brush. Yeah, I'm happy with that. If you want to move your brush or edit it, go up to your move tool and you can move this about. As you can see, my guideline is working really nicely. It's snapping into place so I know that my brush is centered. If you wanted to make your brush larger or smaller, bring up your transform box, which is command or control and then T. And then you can use your shift key to make it larger or smaller as well. Okay, so now we have our finished design. Next, I'm going to show you how to save this out. So first of all, I'm going to go up to file, save as, and I'm going to call it wedding invite. So make sure to save it as a PSD file. You can find the format here at the very top, make sure layers is selected. And this means that every time you go to open it, it will open within Photoshop and you can go in and adjust any of the layers that you want to. 
When you're done, hit save. Okay, now that we've saved it with our layers, we can now merge all this design together. So over in our layers panel, I'm going to select all my layers by selecting first of all the top one, and then holding down the shift key, I'm going to select my bottom layer. All my layers are selected. Right click and go down to merge layers. This will just flatten our design. Now I'm going to get rid of my guidelines so I can see my design more clearly. Up to view and clear guides. Now I'm going to save this out as a JPEG file, save as. And this time go into format down to JPEG and then hit save. Here you have different options. First of all, it's asking for the quality and we can choose how small our file we want it to be. If we make it small in the preview tick box, you can preview how your design will look and you can see it's lost some of the quality. So we don't want it to be too low, but alternatively, if we make it too high, if you're using it for a website, you don't want your file size to be too big. Otherwise it might slow your website down. So I'm okay with this. I'm going to hit okay and it will save your JPEG for you. Next, I'm going to save this out for printing. So first of all, I want to change my color mode. At the beginning, I started out with RGB and you can see this here. And this is ideal for anything that you use for the web. However, if you want to print it, you can change this now. So if you go to image and a mode down to CMYK color, then hit OK. It will change your colors ever so slightly to a different mode that is best used for printing. So now we can go up to file, save as, and you can choose whatever format you would like. So perhaps if you're getting it printed, your printer will ask for a PDF. So you could select this one here or, or you may want a JPEG. Okay. You can save this now. It will bring up this dialog box and you want to select a high quality print unless your printer has other instructions and then just hit save PDF. Hit OK. And your PDF will be saved. Finally, if you just wanted to go ahead and print this right away, you can go up to file and then down to print. So as you can see, there are many different ways on how to put together a finished design, but hopefully that's given you a few ideas to get you started.